All right, so we're going to be filling a palette for Vanessa today. And we've already kind of picked out the colors here. But I want to kind of show you, I was talking about this color is a really cool color that Core has that um, I think is really great for doing grass and stuff. Because we were talking about making, so it's kind of almost got kind of a green color to it anyway. But it's very yellow. Oh yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it's a really cool color. And then when you um, mix it with like something like, I mean, if you really want it supercharged with blue, I mean, you can use... Uh, but does that have gold in it? or? I, I, I'm not exactly sure what the... It, it actually says... Um, the thing that's cool about Core is it's like a worker-owned company that's in New York. And apparently you can actually call them about their color formulations. Oh. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Um, we were looking at the thing. Oh, yeah. So with phthalo blue, for example, you can... That's like a super powerful blue. And... Um, so you're saying green. to mix those to get a green? Well, you'll get a very powerful green with this. And this is the cat who's helping with us today. I don't think he's in the picture, maybe. So this makes a very intense green. Oh, wow. Yeah, phthalo blue. So you don't really need... I mean, you know, it, it makes a very intense blue when you use phthalo. But if you do, um, if you do, like, would you could you do panes with it? Yeah, you could do panes with it if you wanted to do something like, like slightly intense, but it would be slightly desaturated too. So if you put a little bit of panes gray here, panes gray is really dark. Oh wow, it is darker. It's darker but you can, it. but you can, but you see, it's kind of a little bit darker than it's less saturated than uh -huh. than. Um, like ultramarine is a little bit like you can make really nice blacks with ultramarine but when you mix this like with red or with um you know some of the other colors you can make a nicer deeper black with it too but if you mix it with the green gold since this is dry I'm gonna... you can get another piece of paper too if you you know really kind of play around with the color in here you could, this is going to oh, be yeah, a less... Oh, yeah, that's more like an earthy green. Yeah, you're going to get more of an earthy sort of green with it. But you could probably mix the three together, too, to kind of tone it down. I mean, a lot of times I'll mix this green gold with teal, too, and then that gives you that mid-green. Um, let's see if I can convince this not to squirt out. Well, you could fill the palette if you want to. Maybe. Oh, okay. Do you still want this color? <laughs> oh, since it's already sticking out. Sure. Sometimes when you push on the ends of these, you can kind of coax things back in. Sometimes, in theory. I've gotten it to work before, but not on camera. Um, but yeah, so we can, we can, but you can see how these colors sort of, you can play around with these and, and get sort of a more, I think you get a more natural color with, with the green gold mm -hmm. than, like the yellow is going to be brighter and this is going to be more of a natural color. Yeah. But the, it's more um, muted, but I kind of yeah. I like that. I'm gonna hand me a paper towel and sure. I'll dab this off. So, like, you have to be somewhat careful when filling these so you don't make a mess. Um, okay, show everybody how you do it. <laughs> very carefully. Um, let's see if we can get so. And you might even want to make like a little guide in your sketchbook to what you put into it because you don't want to. Oh yeah. You know, I don't put a ton in each one. Just a little bit. Yeah, just a little. You don't need much. Yeah, you don't need much. Um, let's see if I can... Yeah, these colors seem so saturated. That's why I like them, you know, because of doing children's books, I like very saturated colors. So we've got this, and then we were going to do uh, the, how do you pronounce, is it pyrrole red? I don't know, I don't know how, how to pronounce, pronounce it. it. <laughs> yeah, we need to have a pronunciation guide for these paints. Um, and so we'll put the red in here. I'm going to put it over here so it's a little bit. And you were saying you like to buy the big tubes over the little ones? Yeah, well, when you first get the colors, you can get the set of color. And um, it will, um, the set of color comes in littler tubes. And then you can go on Dick Blick and get the individual ones. So you can kind of decide what you like. And uh, they come quite a bit larger tubes. What is this? This is some... Um, 11 milliliters and these are 
I don't even know if these are, these are five milliliters, so these are, you know, less than half of what's in there. So I'm gonna clean this off. So and there's clean it's... water over here if you want. Oh, thanks, thanks. But yeah, these colors are pretty intense, as you can tell. And then, let's see, we're gonna put, sometimes it's nice, because some of these colors look really dark in the pants to like know which is which. Yeah, I'll have to make a little. This is the pain gray. A thing in my notebook that says what I have. It's taking its sweet time out. You have to be careful with these tubes because then when it decides to come out, it's like really coming out. Well, I love your monochromatic drawings with this color. Yeah, I've been really into monochromatic stuff lately. Okay, let's oh no, Christine is really coming out. Yeah, no, I'm trying to see if I can get it to come back in, and it's not. Sometimes you can get if you. Make some space down there. Yeah, sometimes it will suck it back in, but. Well, you could put it maybe in this extra palette. Oh, that's a good idea, since I'm uh, filling this palette too. And I like this in any palette that I do, so. It's a lot in here, but I have to be able to get it off. Yeah. So what are you going to have in your palette guide? Um, I'm going to be doing different, like different people like different palettes. Like sometimes you might want to do like a series of blues or like purples, or if you want to do monochromatic palettes or go warm palettes or cool palettes. Like one thing that's great about um, Payne's Gray is it's great for a cool palette, but it also, you know, has a lot of blue in it. So it makes it, um, you know, it, it gives a lot of depth to artwork. You know, that's one thing a lot of times when people are first struck painting, they tell them not to fill their, um, you know, not to use a lot of black. And I think the reason why they say that is that um, they don't, is that it tends to, if you use it too much, it deadens things and making colors from color gives it a much more interesting and lively feel to it. Um, you know, actually one thing is you're loading this that might be helpful is even using a, a Q-tip. Oh yeah. Kind of cleaning it up. All right. Usually I filled it with the littler ones, um, and the littler tubes don't squirt out as much. Oh, I see. And so we're going to do yellow ochre, which yellow ochre is great in any palette because it's kind of, you know, slightly yeah, faded. It's yeah. Versatile. Yeah, it's very versatile. It'll work well with the green gold, too. And when you're putting your colors in, are you thinking about, like, you're putting in the cool colors next to each other? Or? Yeah, I like to kind of keep the warmer and then the cooler, um, you know. Right. And finally, we you, you wanted to put uh, the phthalo blue, which I think that's how you pronounce it. We don't know how you pronounce anything. I think so. And and this one is a supercharged blue. So, like, one thing I love about phthalo blue, because I use it a lot in children's book illustration, is it's a blue that doesn't go muddy at all. Like, it's, it, 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 it's like a supercharged blue. And so, you know, if you put a little goes a long way and it stays very obviously blue. Um, so that's why I was kind of, because we're only doing six colors on these palettes, I would either do this or the turquoise, depending on which you prefer. I love turquoise because it kind of gives you a brighter blue and a lighter. Mm -hmm. But the phthalo blue, like I do one or the other in your palette. And so um, if you uh, make a guide to it, which do you have a pencil over here? Uh, okay. This pencil is not sharpened. I'll get one. <laughs> like, so now you can kind of you know, look a little bit and see what your colors are. So if you put a little bit of the um, you know, green here, and then you see that, and this is actually a very yellowy color. And then, um, you know, you look here is the yellow ochre, which is, if we do the palette this way, actually let's make it so it matches the palette. <laughs> um, so you kind of have the more warm, it's always more of a warm yellow. So this gives you kind of the warm, yeah, almost orangey cool. and the cool. And so you can kind of play with that with your color palette. And then, um, and this red, this, and I don't know how you pronounce it. We should look it up and see how it, you pronounce the pyrrole, pyrrole red. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, pyrrole red deep is what it's called. 
And then you see, it's kind of a very, it's not a, it's not a super warm red. Mm -hmm. But then the, this is super warm. The, uh, Ooh, that's pretty. The burnt sienna. And then, you know, this is, this is the Payne's gray is very, very blue. I don't know if it comes off across, but this is really great for painting shadows because it already has like I know, a lot of blue in it. it's the perfect shadow color. Yeah. Um, what do we have here and again? And we have, this is the phthalo blue. Oh, yeah. Is, like, when you see this, it's like supercharged. Like, this oh, yeah. is That's blue. That's intense. Yeah. And it, it, it holds up really well. Um, well, it's kind of nice. I have the basic colors up here. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then some. Yeah, the red, yellow, and blue. And then you kind of have the earthy tones. Yeah. And then you can mix them together. So after I fill a palette, I like to put a little paper towel on it and close it so it kind of protects it a little bit from getting all on the top when you use it. Oh, that's a good tip. And then you put it like this, and then it's ready to go. Oh, thank you, Christina. Oh, you're welcome.